Hello, everybody. Um, this is a very special episode because it occurs during a very special time. This is Holy Week 2021. It's a very busy time uh, for people who uh, work in a church, and, and uh, so we're you know we have different days throughout the week that we celebrate different parts of the last week of Jesus's life here on Earth before he was crucified, and and something I wanted to talk about today that I think we very often um, forget uh, is that Jesus, as a part of the Trinity, is holy God. He is completely God. Uh, The Trinity consists of God the Father, the creator of the universe, and the heavens and everything. Uh, The other part of the Trinity is Jesus Christ, which is God manifested as a human, and he's completely human. We're going to get to that in a second. And of course, the third part of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. All of these things are God, but they are God in different ways. So one God in three persons. But I want to talk about Jesus because uh, I feel like Holy Week is an excellent time to talk about this part of the Trinity. Um, My first question to you would be, what makes you human? You have a lot of experience probably, if you're watching this, you've had a lot of experience being a human. Um, some things that make you human, um, number one, you were born. Um, every human I've ever met was born. Um, number two, uh, you have a physical body um, that, hey, check this out. Ow! Yeah, I pinched myself and it hurt. I have uh, senses, I have nerves, I have pain. I also have emotions like joy. I have emotions like anxiety. Um That's what it's like for me to be human. When I say Jesus was wholly human, I mean all of that applied to him as well. If he wasn't wholly human, he didn't need to be born as a little, cute, little, beautiful baby. Um, If he wasn't wholly human, he wouldn't need the same sort of physical body that we have. He could be like Colossus from the X-Men, right? Uh, But he's wholly human. He's completely human. Um, If if, uh, Jesus wasn't wholly human, he may not have the same emotions that we have. Yet throughout the Bible, we have different examples of Jesus' humanity as well as his divinity. Um, When we approach the cross, it's important to remember how human Jesus was. Um, In the Garden of Gethsemane, it said that he sweated blood. And when I first read that uh, as a kid, I thought like, oh, that's something extra special that happened to Jesus. And it turns out there's a, a real... Um, a real disorder that can happen under moments of extreme pain or stress in which your blood vessels, I forget the term, let's put the term up here and maybe a little picture. Um, You can actually have blood vessels burst that lead into your sweat ducts. Um, This is an actual thing that can happen and it happened to Jesus. Uh, As we move forward and we talk about um, Jesus being betrayed uh, for 30 pieces of silver, um, and then he's brought to Pontius Pilate, and then he's sent to King Herod, and he's sent back to Pontius Pilate, and they've all determined that he's really done nothing wrong. Still, his own people, the Jews, wanted to crucify him. And Pilate gave every sort of uh, possibility he could to keep this innocent man from dying. Pilate was 100% uh, sure, certain that Jesus had committed no crime. He was an innocent man. And yet, they still crucified him. Um, Jesus went through the scourge where a whip uh, tore through his flesh. Um, and then he was uh, asked to carry his cross. Uh, uh, scientists and historians believe that that cross probably weighed about 110 pounds. Um, and the crossbar would have gone across the back. His arms were tied on the front, which meant that if he fell, uh, he would have landed on his chest, and that amount of weight on his back would not have allowed him to get back up without help. And that's why we see the Romans uh, commanding Simon to help him get his cross up. Uh, when he is... Uh, there, There's a crown of thorns. Thorns were about, uh, on this particular plant, an inch to two inches long. 
that were placed into his cranium. Uh, you can actually easily die from just a cranium injury. There's a lot of blood vessels up here. I'm telling you all this to tell you just how human Jesus was. And I want you to imagine if you had to feel the same pain. That's the kind of pain that Jesus felt. Um, when they nailed him to the cross, they consider the wrist part of the hand anatomically. And we still do to this day. Um, the nail would be placed here uh, because it would actually go right across a uh, very painful nerve, but also it would keep the nail from falling out through the hand. If you'd put it here, it probably would fall out, and you don't want that to happen if you want somebody to stay attached to this tree. And the same with his ankles. And, and what you end up with is excruciating pain no matter what you're leaning on. And so with every, in order to take a breath on the cross, you would have to push down with your feet in excruciating pain to breathe. And then hang back down with excruciating pain in your wrists to let it out. Every breath was excruciating. Um, finally, after he, after Jesus died, um, a spear went into his side uh, that would have caused uh, blood to come. Blood, we had said that blood and water comes out, and that is uh, symbolic of also his divinity, but um, the type of injury would have been unsurvivable even today with uh, all the medical experts in the world and all the technology we have. He wouldn't have lasted more than a, a minute had he not already even been dead. Um, and I tell you that because it is also important for us to know in this story of Holy Week, Jesus died. Jesus died all the way. Uh, back then, uh, it was Jewish uh, kind of belief and custom that uh, after three days of being dead, um, you're dead. If you died and you were only dead for one day, they might say, well, you might have been resuscitated. Somebody could have done CPR on you and brought you back, and maybe, maybe that happened. Maybe you didn't die all the way. But after three days, it was Jewish custom that you were dead. You were not resuscitated if you came back. If you came back after three days, that was a miracle. And that's why it's important uh, to remember that with Lazarus. Lazarus was dead for four days, and uh, by, that part, by that point, his body was beginning to stink, it says in Scripture. And, and so when Lazarus came back to, to life, that was a miracle to the Jewish people. Jesus died on Friday. Um, any part of a day is also considered a day to the Jewish people. Jesus died on Friday. Um, and he was placed in a tomb, a borrowed tomb. Um, Saturday was the Sabbath, and on that day, um, it was not permitted to be anywhere near a dead body. Um, that would make you unclean, and it's just, it just wasn't the right thing to do. So nobody could take care of his body the next day. The following day, the tomb was empty. And we see on Easter Sunday, which is coming up this week, and I'm really excited about it because it's, it's one of the best celebrations of the entire Christian year. Jesus was no longer in that tomb. Jesus had died. There was no doubt about it. Everybody saw it. He was 100% dead. And then on Easter Sunday, on Sunday morning, he rose. He rose from the dead. He conquered death. And what that means, and what I want you to reflect on this week, if you don't reflect on it, any other week, this is the week to think about it. Jesus, God, manifested as a human, was tortured in one of the most excruciating ways still known to today that you could possibly be tortured. He died all the way for your sins, for things that you committed, not him, so that you can be forgiven. And he rose and he conquered death. And what that means is that death no longer has the final say in your life, or mine. Because even though we broke our covenant with God all the time, all the time we break this covenant, we don't do what we're supposed to say and we fall short, Jesus says, I make a new covenant with you. I love you so much that I'm willing to die for your sins in this way so that you can live with the Father in heaven forever and ever and ever. And isn't that just a great gift of grace we've been given? It's, it's, it's such a mystery, like how much God loves us. And so that's what I want you to reflect on this week. I want you to think about the path that Jesus took to the cross. 
uh, knowing full well what was going to happen to him, knowing that Judas was going to betray him, and he still ate at the table. The love he had for Judas is the same love that he has for you and me. He forgives you of your sins. And if you believe that he truly conquered death, you will be with the Father in heaven forever and ever and ever, and death will no longer have that, that ultimate final sting. Death was conquered on that day. So that's what I want you to think about this week. Um, I hope you have a, a lovely Easter. Uh, we're going to be having an Easter egg hunt here at the church uh, Saturday uh, morning, right after our 10 a.m. service on Saturday. We'll also have um, our sunrise service at Lake Willistine uh, at 6.45 a.m., bright and early. We're going to have um, a service in the FLC at 10 and a service in the sanctuary at 11.15. So we've got all sorts of stuff going on this Easter season. I hope you're able to come out and celebrate the risen Christ with us. I hope you have a great week. Bye.